Welcome to the first episode of The Bench Warmers, presented by FL Teams. I'm your host, David Markowitz, alongside with my co-host, Jackson Heller. And today we're going to be discussing the moves that the Tampa Bay Lightning made and the Florida Panthers made over this offseason to see if it helped them get better or worse. Um, so starting off, the Tampa Bay Lightning were not able to keep their veteran captain in Stamkos, who signed with the Natural Predators for $8 million for four years. And, I mean, this is a big loss. He's, like, probably one of the best Tampa Bay Lightning of all time, if not the best. He's an amazing goal scorer. Um, He's also a great leader. Yeah, I was about to say. Great leader. He helps the community a ton. He does a lot of charity work. And then um, they also – but they did get Gensel, which – um, as a Rangers fan, I know he's a great he's a great postseason goal scorer. Um, and he's a proven winner. He won two cups with the he Penguins. He actually won one cup. One cup with the Penguins. Um, and he's young, has probably not even in his prime yet. And I mean, for nine mil for the next seven years, I mean, I think that's a good signing. I mean, yeah, they only gave up a third round pick to get, to acquire his rights from the Hurricanes after they were unable to sign him. You think about the value that they gave up to sign him to that contract, and he could potentially re- replace Stamkos's production in the goal score <clears throat> in the goal scoring area. But he he's not going to be able to re- replace the leadership. Replace he he is a good person, but the amount of community work that Stamkos was doing and the name and the face, he's not as big as him. But he should be able to replace the goal scoring production as he's just entering the prime of his career. Well, unlike Stamkos, I was gonna say Stamkos is thirty four, so he's kind of reaching the tail end of his career. So I think getting a new young talent, kind of like Gensel, I'm not saying they're gonna be the dynasty they were a couple of years ago when they went to three straight cups and won two of them. Um, but they definitely are a playoff team and a contender with this move, and they. Only like you said, gave up a third round pick for him yeah. for his signing rights and nine mil for his kind of caliber of a player, especially in the postseason. One of the, one of the best in the last like six years in the postseason, uh, statistically. Like it's a great signing for them and um, pair him along, pairing him along. Petrov, I mean, that's going to be one of the best first lines in the NHL. Might be the best. Exactly. Going along with Matthews and Marner and that line. Eh, yeah, I you guess. Don't, you don't think so? I mean, I think there's better lines. I think you got to think about, like, McDavid's line in Edmonton. Okay, Obviously, exactly. that's probably the best line. But I, I think definitely in the Eastern Conference, this has to be the best line. You have Kucherov, who just won an MVP. He did not. It was McKinley. Uh, he was my bad. MVP Final. Final. finalist. Yeah. And uh, Braden Point, who's just a great player. He scored fifty goals last two years. He's ago. a great like he watching him play. He's really underrated. Like one of the most underrated players in the NHL, in my opinion. And then Jake Gensel, who's like just proven himself. Like, like I don't think he gets as much recognition as he deserves. Like, he is a big reason that the Penguins won a cup. So. I mean, with all that said, they definitely have a good first line. It's just if their defense is going to be good enough because... We should also uh, talk about, you know, two of the more under, under radar moves on the, on the defense court. Bringing back uh, two-time Stanley Cup champion Ryan McDonough and trading away Mikhail Sergachev to the newly formed Utah Hockey Club. So the, Sir, the McDonough move was a bit puzzling because they gave up a second round pick for him as he's 36 and he's playing. He has two more years on his deal at six million dollars, which is a bit of a high price for an aging defenseman like McDonough. But it was a curious move. What do you think about bringing uh, the former Rangers captain back from Nashville? I think it was obviously for what he's getting paid and his age. Obviously, that's not worth it. But I think. Getting when they got rid of Stamkos, kind of like when Stamkos left the team, I think they needed a new kind of leader in the locker room because they obviously have Hedman and they have Kucherov who have been there and won. But I think they need somebody like Ryan McDonough, who like he is was the captain of the Rangers, so he obviously has good leadership skills and I, he's been on the team before, so he knows most of the guys, he's familiar with the organization and the community. So I think it's good for the fans because they have a familiar face and it's good for the team because you have you have a 
pretty good defenseman for his age. Obviously, like I said, like not worth the money. The it doesn't ma- necessarily match the players. Exactly. Players but I mean, the Sergachev move was more concerning because I get he was injured for most of last season uh, and he came back in the playoffs. But I mean, he is one of their top two defensemen and just to get rid of him it was kind of surprising to me especially to the new Utah Hockey Club who I mean we don't know how they're gonna do but I mean Arizona wasn't that great last year and I just think they could have gotten more yeah but um so regarding the Sergachev move they traded Sergachev to the U- Utah Hockey Club in exchange for a uh, young and up and coming defenseman in JJ Moser. And they signed him to a two year deal at $3 million AV. They also got a good prospect back, a former 12th overall pick in Connor Geeky, brother of Morgan Geeky, who's a Boston Bruins center. And they also got two late round picks back. So I think all, even though they brought in McDonough and they lost Stamkos and they Brian Gensel, they were able to recoup some good value and in young players because their prospect pool and young player depth has been lacking since they've been pushing to make a run every year. Uh, and it's paid off, though, because they have won two cups and been to three finals in the past five years. What do you think about the circuit chef? Um, I think he's a really, really good player and I think it was definitely a big loss um I mean obviously there's some injury problems there because what he had to get leg surgery right because he a significant leg yeah I don't know I don't remember exactly the injury but I know it was significant and just like for them not to I guess kind of give up on a player just because of an injury I don't think that's good I think there's like players like Crosby who have concussion injuries and stuff like that but Sergeyev is such an elite defenseman and I mean, I like I'm looking at his stats right here. Like even he played 34 games this season, 19 points. That's not terrible for a defenseman. And then in 79 games two years ago, he had 64 points. And if you think about it, he's not even like you. When you think about top defensemen in the league, you probably think about Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes, and Adam Fox, who uh, and Eric Carlson, who he just had a 100 point season. Like, obviously, that's, like, elite elite, but, like, he's an under-radar 64-point defenseman who has a lot of, like, defensive upside. He doesn't have a lot of penalty minutes. He, he only plays on the penalty kill and the and, Exactly. And, and he, he only has have... Utah's number one or two power play as a quarterback. And as a defenseman, a lot of times you'll see them have a uh, plus-minus, and it's usually in the negatives. Like, two seasons ago when he had 79 games played, he had a plus-13. He only had 53 penalty minutes. Like that's really not terrible if you think about it. His his high in his career is 78 games played. Uh in the 2021 season, he had 59 penalty minutes. Like, let's say he plays a full 82, maybe he has 60. Like that's pretty good that's for your number pretty one. Pretty good defense. for your one that's number one defense. Though. It's not the you best. You should expect your number one defenseman to be below 50. Minutes. But he also has one season where he's been in the minus in the plus minus range. And that was in his this year when he had only 34 games played. He, he was a minus 16. And to be well, fair, look, Tampa didn't have a good start. Lineup this year, they had a significant drop off from their, their first, first runs, yeah, and from their uh, first round exit against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think also they had a really poor start to what they usually have because they're an elite team. Like with Tampa, you never know; they could make a cup run. They have the experience. They have the Cooper, players. Vazilevsky, exactly. Edmund, Point, Kucherov, Gensel, Sorelli, Hagel. Like I think that's one of the main reasons he had a minus sixteen. I think they were getting scored on a lot. Vazzy stats. Well, well, he got he was injured. Yeah, he exactly he was injured. Like they really don't have a good goalie tandem either. It's really just Vasilevsky, and then he's expected to carry the load. Exactly, sixty games, and then like that's another thing with them. I think like the last couple postseasons, you could see his stats. Like he had an eight ninety seven this year, uh, save percentage in five games against the Panthers. Like that's not the Vazzy we know. Like it's hard. Because he's like not like he's getting older. It's hard for him to play so many games and then expect to be that prime goalie in the playoffs. I think for them, a very good move or a very big move they have to have is get like a decent backup goaltender. Like the Rangers got a veteran last year and um I'm actually, Jonathan Quick. Quick. Like he's obviously not you're gonna be your number one goalie, but he's a good backup. Like you saw that he Jonathan Quick basically 
stole them games in the beginning of the season when Igor was playing bad. really bad, probably one of the worst goalies in the league with an 899 till the all-star break. And then he had his sore up. But I think they need a goaltender like that, like an under the radar goaltender that will seal them games when Vazzy needs a break. Cause obviously he does with those type of numbers in the playoffs. Now I think we should switch over to their cross town rivals in the floor of the Panthers. So cross state, cross state rivals, the floor of the Panthers. Obviously, coming off their first Stanley Cup in franchise history, a big moment for the franchise, a huge moment in not uh, having the reverse comeback happen to them. Oh, yeah. In losing in game seven after being up 3 0. I want to start with series. this one. But uh, I think we just should start by talking about the departures from the Panthers Cup team this year. Um, you, had, you had departures like Brandon Montour yeah. leaving to the Kraken, Oliver Ekman Larson leaving to the uh, Leafs. Anthony Stolar is leaving to Leafs. Kevin Stenland going to the Utah Hockey Club. What do you think about the loss of Montour and Oliver Ekman Larson? I think Montour is by far their was by far their overall best defenseman. What? You don't think Gustav Forsling? Not in the playoffs. Not in the playoffs. I'm saying when I think of Florida defensemen before Gustav Forsling had this playoffs, I think of Brandon Montour. I was always a Brandon Montour lover. His departure is really bad for the team. He is such a good defense defenseman. Like in the 2023-2024 season when they barely made the playoffs. Or no, that's when they made the playoffs. Sorry. Um, he had 66. Yeah. He had 66 games played with 33 points, which is obviously not like elite offensive defenseman. But well, next year he took a big step with 71. It was 73 before. Yeah. He had 73 and 80 games played. And like that is such a big loss, especially when you have defenders like Aaron Ekblad, who, I mean, like, let's be honest here, guys. He's not the greatest defenseman in the world. Um, and especially since I, there was rumors they were trying to get rid of him um, at, the draft. at the draft, and it couldn't happen, which is a big bummer because they would have way more cap, especially for that type of player. That cap hit is not, not good. Um yeah, like you said, they have Gustav Forsling, who's a great goal, a uh, great uh, point scorer. He's a great defender. He's a very player. young, very young. Twenty eight years old. Exactly. And they very just young. Him to a very cap friendly deal at five million dollars for the next eight years. But I do think Brandon Montour leaving is so significant. I I personally love Brandon Montour. He's one of my favorite Panthers. Um, him and Ryan Lomberg. Yeah, what do you think about the Ryan Lomberg move? Them letting him walk, obviously, the Panthers cannot afford the $2 million price tag that he got from his former team, the Calgary Flames. But what do you think about the loss of Montour and the impact it might be felt in the room and how loved he was by the fans? Dude, when I tell you, like I said, Montour was a nice guy. I'd be lying if I said I didn't say Lomberg was probably the nicest NHL player I've ever met. Um He's a big, big person in um, the locker room. All of his teammates, only good things about him. He obviously is not... He's a heart and soul guy. A bomb of the lineup player who's gritty, who finishes his checks, but he's always on the four check. He's obviously not like the guy you're going to go and put out there to get a goal or to make a skillful play like you would with Kachuk. But yeah, when you're going to need someone that's gritty, someone that's willing to fight somebody... Even for his size, you're going to put him on the ice. ice. Exactly. You're going to put him on the ice. I will say, if I was in the Panthers, I would let him walk too for the two mil. I don't think he's worth two mil. Now being said, maybe 1.5, maybe I'd keep him. I just think that cap hit is way too high for him. Um, But, I mean, yeah, he's a locker room guy. But what do you think about his impact that's going to be the impact of him leaving? What do you think? How do you think it's going to The chemistry the definitely is going to go down. I think he's a big team guy. I think everyone rallies. Like, I think he gets everyone to rally. I think he's definitely the locker room guy that gives, like, a speech when they're down and going into the third, and they come back and win because they're the cardiac cats. I think he's the type of guy that would go in a locker room and give a speech and pump you guys up. And I think he's the guy that they want to be around, like, after the game. Like, they want him with, like, they the players want to be with him. I think he, he's just a great guy in the locker room, and I think he helps the team out a lot. Um, Not on the ice as much because he's not great 
points scorer, but like, yeah, I mean, off the ice in the locker room, he's a very good team leader, and Calgary got a very good player that they needed, someone like that. So obviously, Oliver Ekman Larson, after only playing a year, his impact might not necessarily be felt as much as a type of type of player like Ryan Lomberg or Brandon Montour, but he was he played so well and so effective in his role going into the stretch of the playoffs and going into the cup. Definitely, Florida cannot afford the price tag of around three point five plus, but I think Toronto. They're going to get a good player as long as he doesn't play too high up in the lineup. And going on to the fourth line, the loss of Kevin Stedman. He's a great fourth line center, a great defensive forward, great on the penalty kill, but they replace him with a veteran of Thomas Nasick's caliber. He's played on cup on cup teams. They've lost in the cup. He's played on playoff teams. He's played with young kids. He knows how to mentor kids. But, um, yeah, what do you think about um Spencer Knight, the competition between Spencer Knight and Chris Drieger? They brought Drieger back from the Seattle Kraken this year to compete with Knight for the backup job. I do think, you think he's going to end up winning that job. I think if Spencer Knight's on his game, one, we know how much Panther fans love him because we go to the games all the time. And even in the anthem, they're chanting his name when they say Knight in the anthem. Um, I think... Spencer Knight would win it because I do think they want him to get the experience because he's still technically a young goaltender. I believe he's 23 or 24. Yeah, he's a young goaltender who has a lot of talent. He's like he, a young goaltender with a high price tag. Making yeah. $4 million. But and that's the point. You want to, like, I think they're going to play him because you're paying him that much. You might as well give him the. But they the didn't position. last year. They gave Anthony Stolarz the backup position. Well, that probably had something like. Obviously, Solar's is playing great, but I think it has something to do with him being in the assistant program um, for, what was it, OCD? Whatever it was. It's undisclosed. Oh, uh, undisclosed. Um, but I still think, like, he is a great goaltender. So why don't uh, we move on to the winners and losers of free agency? Jackson, I'll let you start with your first winner of free agency. I mean, this is a pretty obvious pick. I'm going to go... With the team we talked about earlier in the segment for about a minute, the Nashville Predators. Um, I mean, they just got so much better, dude. Like, Steven I mean, Stamkos. Yeah, Brady Shea. Brady Shea's Jonathan Marcheseau. Brady Shea is so underrated. I mean, with his time in the with the Rangers and with the Canes, like, he's the type of player that you don't know his name until you start watching the, the team play regularly, and then you'll see him on the ice. Like, he's such a good addition for them. And then... Didn't they they resigned Soros? They did, yeah. Eight he's, a, eight. he's I know he's people say he's really small for a goalie. I love his agility. I think he's a great goalie. I think he can bail you out and win you games. And I think that's what matters. I think he's gonna be an amazing playoff goalie. I just think the last couple uh playoff, like when they played the Avalanche, when the Avalanche he won the cup, he didn't play, he didn't play which is why I think if he did, it would not have been a closer series, but maybe he steals one or two, makes it an interesting series. And then this year, I mean, like, yeah, he didn't play the best, but like, I mean, he, they were, they're not a bad team. They're, they're only getting better and made the second round, right? First, first, first round in seven, seven games, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think they could have beat the Oilers. They made it to the second round. That's just me. I had them going to the cup. But um, I just think they got better and, like, way better. And, I mean, who knows? I mean, that division. They also brought back Alexander Carrier. He's going to play on the second pair. Uh, he's slated to play on the second pair with uh, Jeremy Lazan. And they also brought on a proven backup in uh, Scott Wedgwood to back up Saros. But they also have a strong young goalie in Yaroslav Ask Askarov. He was so good in the playoffs. Like he was in the, in the minors. I thought, who's the one that was in the playoffs? Oh, that was Vancouver's. Dude, can I just Where say that for a second? Arthur, Arthur he was so good. Like he, like oh my god. Sorry, sorry. We'll talk about him later. He's so good. We can actually talk about him now because my first winner of free agency is actually the Vancouver Canucks. You look at you look at who they brought back. They re-signed Phil Peronic to an eight-year deal. 
They brought in Jake DeBrusque, who's going to play on Elias Pedersen's line. And he's hopefully going to help Pedersen as an offensive weapon because towards the end of the back half of the season, he Pedersen, terrible. he played like he played awful. He was terrible. For his contract that he signed, no, it was bad. And the playoffs was atrocious. I mean, you couldn't really see him on the ice. They tried so many different line changes. Nothing worked. Um, I think their head coach is an amazing, amazing coach. Yeah, he did win uh, the Jack Adams this past year. Well, right? obviously, yeah. obviously, but I think I think he's a, he's a player's coach. I think the boys in the locker room love him and they're going to rally around him. I wouldn't be surprised if they made a run to like the Western Conference Final or won their division again. They probably only got better, especially with their – they also changed up their decor. And they right? have experience. Like, like, and there wasn't – Quinn Hughes is the first year's captain uh, this year. first year. Exactly. Uh, and year. he was really good. Um, I mean, they're a young, talented team. No one saw them take a step forward that quick, especially because of their prior season. But I think um, – especially, like, players like JT Miller, also amazing. Love JT Miller. But, like – I think their defensive core is They changed it up a little good. bit this year. They did bring back Myers, but they did let Zadorov walk. I still think if and you have Quinn Hughes cool. to build around, I don't think you can be complaining as a – like he's a type of defenseman that you can have a sloppy second and third pairing. You can't because but we you saw, still we make saw up. what happened in the playoffs. In the second round, he became ineffective. And the, and the second Yeah, who'd they player, play in the second round? The Edmonton Oilers. Who's they on saw, the Edmonton Oilers? It doesn't matter. You saw okay. how ineffective he became. Point at what point? All I'm saying is... You saw how ineffective Hughes, he became. In if, the playoffs, you need big defensemen who can score and who can uh, be playmakers. They really... Like, that series was closer. Like, that game seven was really close. It could have gone anyone's way. I think... Okay, Quinn Hughes wasn't good. I still... My point still says... He's one of the best, if not the best, defenseman in the regular season for sure. Um, he needs at least one other defenseman and a decent second pair, but that third pair could be horrible, and I still think they'd be a playoff. Well, player. I think they are going to change up their pairs this year. I think they are going to have Hughes man his own pair with a uh, newly acquired big defenseman in Vincent D- D'Arnais from the Edmonton Oilers, should... and then – the second pair, I believe, is going to be Phil Peronik's pair, and he's slated to play with Carson Seuss. And then the third pair is going to be their big body and bruising pair, blocking shots, playing the penalty kill, playing in key situations, and that's going to be made up of Derek Forbert and Tyler Myers. And Tyler Myers, he was once a good offensive player, but he had to shift his game, when, one that didn't work for him anymore, and he used his size and his strength to become a more defensive defenseman. To my second pick, my second pick is gonna be the Devils. Now, um, I am a Rangers fan. I dislike the Devils. I'm gonna be unbiased here. They're a good. They're a good team. Um, I don't think they'll win first in the Metro. Um, but they got very good defenders. Jack Hughes is a, such a good player, dude. Him and Nico Heischer, bro, I love them. Um. And I don't know. I just think they got a goalie, which they needed, in Markstrom, um, which was like, like I said, that's like, a huge job. That is that that is what they needed last season because their goaltending was awful, dude. Like, uh, who is the Bitek Banachek? And Akir I yeah, like from them going to that first round uh playoffs two years ago against the Rangers when they were literally like. The best goalies in the first round. Insanity. Like, it was crazy. He had, like, what, like a 950 save percentage in the games three and above? Something like, like that, Like, yeah. for him to do that and then just be horrible, which happens to players because, like, like you know, people go on hot streaks and then they, like, go, come back to yeah. earth. Like, like he's – like, he played like he should have. But this season, like, for them to get Markstrom – and like I'm not saying he's like a like he's not like a top five goalie, but he may be top ten. Like they they needed that, and like I said, they're a young talented team. They have experience with Andre on Andre Pilat. Um, they they have a lot. I think, I think you also have to talk about two key additions to the defense core in Brendan Dillon and Brett Pesci, and them getting rid of John Marino and sending him to the Utah Hockey. Team. I also do think it helps that teams like. The Canes lost so many key players because 
I'm not the they Canes. Lost Pesci, they lost Gensel. Shay. They, in my opinion, they have probably two years left. To the Canes. What? Until they have Seth Jarvis. Have two years left, I think, because like they're only gonna get worse. How? They still have all their key guys. Can I explain? Jarvis, I know, but they got rid of Brady Shea, who's really good. Underrated okay, as one piece that but, they're replacing with. Um, teams are only getting better in the Metro. Like it's no, gonna be. They, it's been. It was a status quo season for the Metro during this offseason. The Devils, they did get a little better. They improved on their goaltending. The Canes got a little worse. No one else did any any anything. I think the Canes game. have a couple of years. I don't if they don't win the next like two seasons. I think they'll be a playoff team still, but I don't think they'll have a chance to win the cup. That's my. Why opinion. not? When you have Brindamore, when you have Aho, when you have Jarvis, you could have a, as good a coach as you want, but you, you don't have the players. You, have Burns, you don't have the players. You have players. You have perennial players. You have proven. Playoff players. They only have a top. Have they winners. only have a top six. They don't have. A, they don't you have, a you have winners in Jordan Stahl, who's their captain. He's a he's good old. defensive forward, he's so old. he's a proven winner. I just that's my opinion. Anyway, the Devils probably finish second or third, in my opinion. They'll take a step forward again, like they had two seasons ago. Um, my second winner of the off season is actually the Utah Hockey Club, I or formerly Arizona Coyotes. I love. They them. made some key moves to their back end. They added to their bottom six. They got more structure in their bottom six. They added big guys like we talked about before in Mikhail Sergachev and John Marino. They added a great defensive and bottom six forward in Kevin Stedlin. What do you think about Utah's ads this year? I love Sergachev, dude. Love him. I love Clayton Keller. Um, there's another young Cooley. guy. I love Cooley. Love him. Um, Hockey's hard sport. Um, it takes more than... Those players that we just mentioned, I just think they'll be okay. I could see them being a 500 team. I think playoffs is out of the picture. I think they have like two more seasons, then they'll be a playoff team. That's my opinion. But I do like the addition of Sergeyev. Like I said, when we talked about it earlier, I love him. So I'm going to move on to our losers. Of free agency in the offseason. My loser is the Vegas Golden Knights. They lost a key heart and soul guy in Jonathan Marsh, so who could have been the captain, was the Conn Smythe winner for them when they won the cup two years ago. Lost a key second line center in Chandler Stevenson to the Kraken. They also lost a key piece of their goalie tandem in Logan Thompson when they had to trade to the Washington Capitals during the draft. They did recoup a few assets when they got Alexander Holtz from the New Jersey Devils when they traded for him. They also signed Ilya Samsonov to potentially replace Thompson as their tandem. But what do you think about uh, the Knights offseason? All right. So I'm going to give you guys a sports comparison, right? So for all you listeners out there, if you guys know anything about baseball, you know that the AL is way better than the NL. Right, like the AL East, like the Yankees, the Red Sox, all of them are better than the Diamondbacks, and the Brewers. Right, that's how I feel about the hockey West and the East. Um, I think the West is just getting worse, so I think Vegas will be fine. I think Vegas is going to be a very good team, especially because they have to play in the West a lot more than they play the East. I think when they play teams in the East, you'll see their actual skill. But I think the West, they'll be fine in. Um, I really don't think a lot of teams got better in the West. Um, I think, if anything, more teams got worse. Um, and I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be the same type of team as last year. I, obviously, losing Jonathan Marsh, so is a big deal. And uh, Stevenson. And uh, their goalie. Uh, Thompson. Obviously. It's like, a, like big losses, right? But I do think they have the core... Um, I think the Vegas LTIRs will be fine. I think they'll get somebody in the trade deadline. Uh, I, I expect um, who's their captain? Mark Stone. Mark Stone will be back on the IL during right. the trade IR d- during the trade deadline. I think they'll get somebody else. They also have Noah Hannafin on a deal. Um, New deal they signed him to last offseason. Exactly. Or I think he's a, he's a great addition. Um, yeah, they lost some key players. Are they still? Similar to the Vegas team that won two years ago, 
Do we know they have playoff experience? Do we know that they're, what, they're eight years into their franchise? Seven? I thought it was eight. It's like going to be eight. I thought it was going on, yeah, going on to eight. Like, they miss playoffs once? Yeah. Do we know that they're going to do their thing at the trade deadline that they always do that we're not going to bring up for the third time in the last minute? Yeah. They're going to be fine. They'll be either a borderline team or they're going to win the division like they do every year. They'll be a wild card team or they're going to win the conference. Like, I think they'll be fine. They'll make the playoffs. They'll, they'll lose in the first round like they did last year. Like, I, I don't think it's much of a change. They got older, yes, but, I mean... I think I think knowing what it takes to get there and their players know that helps you a lot, especially when you lose some skill. And I think the younger teams don't know what it takes, and I think they do. So I think they could be teams out of a playoff spot, like a wild card spot, like the Utah Hockey Club, like a couple other teams. I wasn't suggesting before. That I'm not saying that. I'm saying make, I'm not. Too, no, 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 I'm no. Going to be like the last wild card. Oh, no, I'm not saying. Card. I'm not saying. That's what you said. I'm saying that if I had to choose right now, I'd say a team like Vegas would be a younger team like them out. Like, yeah, I think I think that'll happen. I mean, what who's, do you think? Who's your loser? My loser? I mean, like, I have, like, two. Like, I have two notable ones. Um, the Rangers, which we'll get to second, and the San Jose Sharks. Why do you think the San Jose Sharks are a loser? They got... Arguably the best player in the draft, or not arguably the best player in the draft in Celebrini. Will Smith is coming over from BU. They brought in Tyler Toffoli to play on Celebrini's line. They got Jake Wallman with a second round pick in exchange for nothing. Oh, yeah. this is why I think they're losers, right? Um, they did get the best player in the draft. Will Smith is coming over, like you said, and Tyler Toffoli. Um, three players don't change a franchise. Okay, especially I, but how not. how does that make them a loser? That would just make them status quo because or a little bit better. Okay, okay, because you hear me out, right? For a team that bad, like I not expecting them to do more, but like they have so many draft picks they could trade. They could have done so many more trades. The fact that yeah, that was that's that's not three, their, but and they were that's, guaranteed that's, it. That's not the stage that they're in, right? <laughs> Rebuilding from how they were before. They're tearing down the pieces from their team. They're taking the next step into the rebuild after Smith is coming over and celebrating. I understand, but I think if you're looking back at teams that were almost as bad as that... But why would they trade their picks? you got to look at teams like the Blackhawks two years ago when they were able to get the first overall pick. They didn't they, trade their picks for players. I'm not saying they did, though. They they got more players. They signed more players. They built no, they around didn't. the guard. They did that. Taylor six, Hall, they, they Corey Perry... That was la- I'm talking about last post. I'm comparing. Okay, they also did that this year. They did that with Gaudreau. They did that with Toffoli. I don't they think Gaudreau. Brandon. I don't. I mean, I okay, don't think. But he's, this, he's a similar player to Nick Foligno. It's just a leader who's been there, done that, who's won I, a cup, who knows what to do, who's a good defense. I still player. have them as my losers because I don't think they're going to be much better. Which is what the off season is for is to get better. I still think they okay, can win around the same. Okay, but that would just make them status game. quo. That would make them exact. I can exact see them losing the more games though. That's not possible with players like Smith, Celebrini, Toffoli. You don't know how they're going to do in the NHL. You can't put them as winners. Unless okay, you see that. Celebrini. We know the production. We know. We know the. We don't. We know the comparables. We know who he's like. We know he's like Bedard. We know he's like greats like McDavid, Crosby, those type of players. He's not going to just perform horribly in his first year. I'm not Crosby saying in his he will. rookie year scored a hundred points. I'm not saying he's going to perform poorly, but you don't know with young players. You can never, like, you could predict okay, them when they're players. Like, Bedard? No, you weren't. They're, well, Bedard's they're, different. Bedard's no, a way not. better talent than no, Mack and Sutter com- was. Comparable no, he's not. Yes, they are. Just because Celebrini. If my iPad Stafford. was alive right now, I would go stat for stat with you, buddy. But just, just because did Macklin Celebrini have seventy something goals? No, because no. He, he doesn't play. He played in thirty college, college games. Yeah, and okay. you could you could college relate it to the games. College, you could relate it to the game, game to the actual NHL than it than CHL or WHL is. But Dard would have scored like forty in NCAA. No, okay, so. Celebrini put up 70 points. That's a record for a freshman in college. We'll see. We'll see. That's my take. Okay, we'll why see. do you think the Rangers are losers? They didn't do anything. They didn't, they didn't lose That's my point. Players. I, why do you think the Rangers are losers? Okay, I think the Rangers are losers because they didn't do nada. They did nothing. 
They that, that doesn't make them a worse team. Can I ex uh, wait, yeah. you could not do anything and still be an offseason loser. That's, that's my not, definition that's of an offseason loser. An offseason loser is losing significant time. That's not what I think. I stupid. When I think about offseason losers, I either think about teams that barely do anything to help them get better that were already really bad, or I think about teams that, huh, I don't know, just made it to the Eastern Conference Final, have no top six scoring. Yes, Who do they do? The get Aaron Riley Spanish, Smith. Yeah. They didn't. What? Did, how many points did they have in that Eastern Conference Final game? Okay, Tell me right know, now. We know they're not. We know they're not proven playoff players. Exactly. That's why they needed to go out and get a guy like but Jay Gensel, or they needed to they go out have and get money for Gensel. That's why you trade away Barkley Goudreau. You trade away Truba. You Goudreau makes three million dollars. Gensel is making nine. He was. I said Truba and Goudreau. But Truba wasn't going to move off from the Rangers. You're you're telling me they're going to follow the same pattern as moving off Ryan McDonald. One hundred percent. They, they try to. Why would they do that? They literally why tried to do why it. Would, why would they? Why would they move off their captain? Why? Because the their captain the is a liability in the playoffs time after time. I personally went two years ago to Game Six, uh, Rangers Lightning Eastern Conference Final when the Rangers lost. I Truba had. Four penalty minutes in that game, and they were so costly because Lightning got momentum and scored right after that penalty happened. And this year, Truba is the sole reason that we lost game six. That defensive error when he went for the hit, missed the hit, didn't take the puck, and left his man. To who scored that first goal again in the game six? Panthers, Rangers. It was a snipe. I don't know. Igor couldn't have done anything about it. You can't even blame him, and you can't blame the other defenseman because it was a two on one. He's the sole reason that goal was let in. He's the sole reason they lost. He's a liability in the playoffs. And I just don't think he's not worth the money and no team's going to take him. You got to buy him now. If, if they move off their captain for a second time in a row, why would why would another player want to come to the Rangers and become the captain if they have this tendency of moving off their captains a year or two after naming them and giving them the seat? Because I think he wasn't the first choice for the captain. I, it was... It was Kreider. He declined it, and I think, I think it shouldn't have been true. But that. have you heard from sources that Kreider was the number one choice? Or are you just purely Kreider? No, I I read him. I don't know where it was. It was on Bleacher Report when it happened. We were in Toronto when it happened. When Truba got named captain that morning, I read something about Kreider declining it. Yes, I think Chris Kreider. Definitely declined it. He was the first person they were gonna ask. Okay, but you don't think you don't think he declined it because he saw what they did to McDonald. No, I no, I like, for sure think that's why they, he declined it. I hundred okay, percent. So that's my point. I don't why, care. Why don't... would someone? Why would they trade their their captain in Jacob Truba? And because it would show that they they have tendency to trade their captain a year after naming them. Why would someone want to take the C again? I don't think taking the C matters. I think, I I think. I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't they also did it with Ryan Callahan. I, I'm not disagreeing with you there. I think that if a player comes to a team just to get the C, they shouldn't be a captain. I think it's unfortunate that all those captains happen. I'm saying players but, on the roster. Why would it, Let's say they moved off true, but why would someone like Fox or Zabanajet or Because Fox is well, a hometown they, kid. They're why, not moving on from him. He's a but, what happens, but what happens if the same thing happens? Uh, to him, that happened to Truba. You you don't think he would be afraid they'd move off of him? I don't. I think it's different with Truba because it's happened for three years in a row where he's played event. I think the only reason he got captain is because he was he is a good person in law. He sells his artwork to like galleries. Yeah, but that's not the only thing a captain should. I know. Do. I'm not saying. I'm not it, saying it that's the reason. Be off by some. I'm not saying it's off ice. He shows leadership. Like in that uh, game two years ago when the Rangers were. Um, had their little lull in the middle of the season and they played the Blackhawks, um, he had to fight twice and won both of those fights after hits that were clean. I know he has dirty hits. Those two hits were clean in the Blackhawks game. And um, he had to fight and no one was cheering for him on the bench. The bench was dead. You could see it. The camera pointed to them. And he threw his helmet on the ice and started yelling at the bench. Since then, we went on a winning streak, and we soared. We were one of the best teams in the league to end the season since December. And I think he does show captains, captaincy, leadership, uh, leadership qualities. qualities on the ice and off the ice. I just think when he, like, except for those small moments, he's such a liability. And I don't think he's, for what he's getting paid $8 million a year, 
like he they could do so much more with that money. And I think for him putting Detroit on his no trade clause after they wanted to trade him, it looks well, worse for him. And his I get it. I get it. You would do that as a player. Also. I would do it. I I know. No. Don't act like if you were a player and your family was settling down in a city that you wouldn't do that. If you're if I'm in the exact trade. circumstances and I'm going to a team like the Detroit Red Wings who could make the playoffs this year, then I don't care. But he has that right? He is, to, he's to being team no trade. He, is, he has that right. I'm not it's saying he doesn't. Given to him by Chris Drury. I'm saying he is being more selfish because he's. Thinking about one person rather than the yes, betterment of the whole that, team. That is what he's allowed to do because he was given that trade protection. I, I get he's given the trade protection. Any, any, player, any player would do the same thing. I don't think any player would. I think if you're moving to well, a I city really, like Detroit, I don't. I, that I, doesn't I, matter. His I, I wouldn't party, do it. You asked me the question, unbiasedly, I wouldn't. You do would it. do it. You I would, I would not say it. You family and your roots were there. You you would be selfish just, because you were given from, that trade protection. Literally from Michigan. Literally, literally, but he Detroit. made his roots in New York, dude. He, he, the, the, dude, he literally did. He played there for like four years, like, he's lived he's longer there. in his life, so he Detroit. can put his roots. Only reason I think he stayed is because a, a family member wanted him to stay for at least one year so they could finish up some work, and I think that, yeah, you want to support your family. But at the same time, they could have done the same thing in Detroit. And his he's literally from there. His parents live there. His whole family's from there. I think, like, if I'm him, I'm growing up in Detroit. I'm a hometown kid. Fans would love me there. Personally, I would have moved to Detroit. Um, but that's the reason I think they're losers. I mean... Like, they didn't really do anything. So, like you said. It's status quo. I wouldn't call that out being a, an off-season loser. I, like, I think it's more of a loser. Like, I think you're, like, on the board. I think it's, like, 49% loser. Like, fifth, or, or, yeah, no. I think it's 51% loser, 49% winner. Like, they didn't lose or win. But they lost a bit more than they won. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't make, like, if they lost in the first round this year. Like, I... Or made miss playoffs like they really didn't do it. They're not gonna miss the playoffs. They well, they won. won't. They, but like they just won the president for being the best team in the league. Like they they won't lose. They will make the playoffs. But I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, didn't do anything in the playoffs. Like I, I just don't think they're gonna be that good. And that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning into the first episode of Bench Warmers presented by FL Teams. I'm your host David Markovitz. Alongside my co-host Jackson Heller, and we really appreciate you guys for watching. And uh, let us know in the comments what you want us to talk about next episode. Signing off. Signing off.